So I'm going to move to something that is very current today. I think the survey in the Gyanwapi Mosque was concluded today, am I right, Sandeji? I think today was the... Yes, sir. And my hunch is that it's only the first round. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't it anybody's guess that there is... I mean, everybody knows that there is a temple there. Or there was a temple there. Everybody knows Kashi Vishwana was there and that Aurangzeb destroyed it and that the priests moved. I mean, everyone knows the story. Uh, anyway, I mean, I, I don't think uh, courts work on the basis of stories, but um, uh, proof is required. So my question actually is to do with Yanwapi Mosque is only the beginning. It has led to the, you know, um, um, uh, rise of, uh, or it has led to or raked up, um, you know, murmurs about other such monuments, like, for example, the Kutub Minar and Taj Mahal. I know you did a show recently on this. Um, so are these, uh, what do you see happening here, uh, Sanjayji? Is it just a few isolated case? Initially, we thought it was only uh, Ayodhya and then, of course, then the protest or the demand for Kashi and Mathura uh, and now Kutub Minar, Taj Mahal. So what do you think is happening here? Could you make, probably, you know, uh, put all of this in perspective for us? See, this uh, whole business started... Uh... The, the uh, first documentation of this was done by Sitaram Goelji. This is the book. No, uh, the one he talks about the Islamic invasion of Hindu temples. I think another here, book. Here, here is the, this is the volume one. Uh, Hindu, Hindu temples. temples, what happened to them? What happened to them, yes. So this is the volume one. The second volume is also here. This is, this, this is the second volume. This is the, the Islamic evidence. So he proves this with Islamic evidence and he's got a list here. He's got a list of those temples. This was the list he prepared. Yeah, this is page 72. Wow. Yes. And uh, he included only those temples on which there was firm evidence that he had collected. Hmm. And uh, this was about a list which was about uh, 2,000 temples. 2,000 temples. So this 2,000 temples. And then he <clears throat> invited uh, Lala Krishna Advani ji to the launch of this book. By the time Ayodhya movement had already started. Start. Start. The Ayodhya movement had already started in a very pale way. In fact, people who know uh, Ayodhya, I was uh, there as a child. I was in fifth standard at that time. <laughs> My father was posted in uh, Fezabad which is, was the district headquarter where Ayodhya was situated. Basically, there are twin towns of Yogi in there. Uh, so he was posted in Fazabad. Even at that time, as a child, I was exposed to this, where the entire atmosphere, the whole environment was full of the tales of the sacrifices that uh, Hindus did. And uh, I think at that time, there were used to talk about the 86 battles that uh, took place to liberate uh, the temple. I think the um, public always knew this, especially in and around Kashi. But then uh, this documentation was done for the first time by Sitaram Goelji when he invited Lala Krishna Advani to the launch very unexpectedly he betrayed Sitaram Goelji and announced that, that we are ready to give up on all other claims if they give us uh, that, uh, Ayodhya. Ayodhya. Oh my God. Mm. So, it, you can see, political parties will always be political parties. However much we give them credit. <laughs> and then, of course, the people never ex accepted it. And then the slogan started that uh, Ayodhya to was jhaki hai, Kashi Mathura. Kashi Bakhi. Mathura, Bakhi hai. <laughs> Bakhi hai. And uh, of course, you know how it went <clears throat> as far as the Ayodhya was concerned. Mm. And uh, after Ayodhya happened, then uh, Vishwa Hindu Parishad, of course, was uh, at that time led by a stalwart like uh, Ashok Singhalji. And uh, right now, it, it's not even a um, shadow of that kind of a body. Mm. And uh, uh, I'm not sure whether it would be able to helm this kind of a movement again. But if it doesn't, then somebody else will. Mm. Because these are causes 
that uh, create their own leadership. Correct. And um, because as somebody said, I was mentioning, I just had a session before I came on to yours, I did this uh, uh, recording. One broadcaster recently said, he also comes on Jaipur Dialogues, Pradeep Singh. Hmm. And uh, he said, Ki Kaurvo ne panch gaon dene se mana kiya tha. <laughs> Then I, I added my own bit in, in, in a tweet. Kidna keval Raj Gawaya Jan Bigawai. Jan Bigawai, correct. So, right now, this situation is then that kind of an inflection point. And I don't think uh, the Ashraf Mullah Maulana, who lead the Muslims in India, they have that kind of a wisdom. Mm. that they, they still continue with their supremacist ideology. They still think that they can conquer India back and turn into a fortress of Islam. They still think that's why I think this is possible. They still think that they will turn everybody into a Muslim because Muslim. they have to go to Jannat themselves. So mm. they must subject everybody else to this kind of a torture because mm. the Ashraf Mullah Malana must go to the uh, mm. Jannat. Uh, everybody else uh, may be damned. So uh, they will not give up. Their behavior has been consistent uh, ever since they set foot in India. And uh, you can see that in all recorded writings of the Muslim historians. You've got a lot of these writings available. You've got translations from Eliot and Dawson into English. And if you want it in Hindi, then Sayyid Athar Abbas Rizvi has translated it in English. And that translation has got translated by the AMU itself into Hindi. Though they have now tried to disappear those books. But then mm. there are ways that we, the things can reappear. <laughs> so all those uh, books have reappeared on the internet archives. And they are available. Atar Abbas Rizvi's books in Hindi as well as in English. And Elliot and Dawson, of course, is widely available. So you can, uh, you can read... What is the name again of the uh, British or the English writer? Uh, this is um, uh, India's History. India's History. By, in, by a Indians, something like that. Okay. Elliot, E-double-L-I-O-double-T, Elliot and Dawson. D -O -W. Dawson. Elliot and Dawson. Okay. Elliot and Dawson. So if you Google Elliot and Dawson, you will get this. <clears throat> India's history as uh, written by its own historians. So all those accounts are available. And when I showed you this volume two of Sitaram Goelji's book, the Islamic mm -hmm. evidence, so most of it comes from the uh, <clears throat> Islamic authors. So right. that's, that's something that their consistent behavior they cannot deny. And I have actually looked at their consistent behavior and I written an article about the Sufis, then uh, I quoted that. Yes. Uh, you can start their great Sufi, the Mujaddid al Fasani, the Ahmad Sarindi, mm. from there to their successors, his, uh, um, his son, his grandson, who was the mentor of uh, Aurangzeb, uh, <clears throat> starting from there right down to these uh, uh, Abdul Rahim, Shah Waliullah, all those names that I took, uh, Sayyid Ahmad, Iqbal, consistent. That separatism, that exclusivism, that supremacism. At which point does Sufi get, in, in Sufi get uh, associated with inclusivity and, uh, you know, uh, the kind of, because everybody just loves, you know, whenever they talk about Islam, they talk about Sufism. And I don't know, I, I know you've covered this topic extensively. But uh, I'm also curious as to how could something so, uh, something be so misunderstood, so, uh, you know. With it's, the, it, it, that's, what's, that's what's called propaganda. What else is propaganda? Just because they sing and dance, people think they're moderate. <laughs> At least uh, they should also uh, try and translate what they're singing. Mm. Just because that they don't do. They seem to be like, you know, very liberal and very... The whirling their wishes just because they whirl around. Uh, they, of course, <laughs> they are called kafirs by the Devandis. That doesn't mean that uh, they do not call you as a kafir. Mm. 
Uh, basically, what has happened with the Sufis that because when they started out at that time <clears throat> in 10th century or so, there was a huge conflict within Islam. Mm. And that was a time when these uh, Shariat Walas uh, actually won that contest. And till that point, there was definitely an inclusive uh, chapter to mm. the Sufism. Uh, if you look at these, uh, what people do is that they will quote Rumi and they will quote uh, some other Rumi, yeah. an ancient uh, uh, Sufi. Uh, at that time, the uh, Tasavvuf, as it is called, Sufism, it's called Tasavvuf. So tasavvuf was not subordinated to Shariat. Okay. So it is from that time that these people, when they do propaganda, then they talk about the 10th century. Mm. But they don't tell you that in the 11th century, a guy, a Sufi called Al Ghazali, came, which uh, heralded the victory for the Asharis over the Mutazalis, as they used to be at that time, the rationalists. And that victory ensured that uh, the Savvuf was firmly subordinated to Sharia. Sharia. So once it has come under the Sharia, then there's the question. You're not different. That's what I ask everybody. Can a Sufi disregard Sharia? Mm. They will either not answer you mm. or they will say yes. In either case, if they are subordinate to Sharia, then they are exactly like every other Ashraf Mullah Walana. If you see the history of massacres in the Indian subcontinent, all the great massacres were led by these Sufis. Mm. You look at the evidence I've given in Unbreaking India, that chapter I have written that to all the great massacres, Malabar, that was um, a, a, a Khadrij uh, Sufi, uh, this Abu Musliar, and that uh, was his called the other guy who established the, the Dola. Al Dola. Dola okay. is an Islamic uh, rule, okay. uh, Islamic kingdom. So you're saying Kunj that Kunj Ahmad, his name was Kunj Ahmad Haji. So Kunj Ahmad Haji and Haji. Uh, yeah, uh, Ali Musliyar, they were both Sufis, Khadri Sufis. Look at Noah Khali. What is Noah Khali? That was uh, Nizami Chishti, Ali Sarwar, Hussain Sarwar. Hmm. And uh, look at all the killings that happened in Punjab. So, all these Sufi tariqas who were leading them. Mm. Mm. Look at the killing of the gurus. That yes, was Nakshbandi yes, yes. Chishti, this uh, Ahmad Shah, uh, sorry, mm. Ahmad uh, um, Sarindi. He was the one who inspired the killings of uh, the gurus, of uh, the Sikh gurus. Sikh gurus. So uh, all this is a complete hoax. Then uh, look at the evidence uh, afterwards. Who was, what was, who was Aurangzeb? Mm, he also, I think, followed a Sufi. Yes. So he, he, he followed the Nakshbandi Tariqa. Mm. He, right. was, uh, he was uh, his, his, his peer, his peer Murid. You know, you have this uh, uh, the Guru disciple uh, kind of a relationship, peer and Murid. His peer was Muhammad Masoom, the son of Ahmad Shah, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Sheikh Ahmad Sarindi. So Mia Masoom mm. was his peer. Aurangzeb's peer. Aurangzeb's peer. Right. So he was actually uh, initiated into the Nakshbandi Sufi Silsila. Mm. Now all these Abdul Rahim, Shah Waliullah, there was all, all of them followed these Sufi tariqas. Mm. So this is a complete hoax. And uh, let not anybody be misled by these. There's only what is called. Uh, I think somebody made a very fine remark as a comment on one of my videos on Sufis. Sufiyon mein aur baakiyon mein farak itna ye hai ki wo gana ga ke aapki gardan kaatte. Correct. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanyavad. Namaskar.